So your SD card could be the one thing that's stopping your photography from being as quality as it could be. Okay, so I've been getting questions about this a lot in the chat, okay? And I need you guys to know the difference about SD cards. A lot of people have been asking me in the chat, like, oh my gosh, what's really the difference? Like, one of the members just found an SD card that was $15. I'm like, wait a minute, let's see why that SD card is $15. So let's talk about something that a lot of creators will, you know, overlook. It's your SD card, all right? Because believe it or not, that little card, that little piece of plastic, all right? It may be the reason that your footage that you think is 4K looks trash, or the reason that your camera keeps freezing mid shoot, or you're not even able to fully, you know, unleash the capabilities of your camera, all right? So let's start from the bottom, all the way to the bottom, bottom, bottom. I have examples right here that I could even show you guys. I'm an SD card junkie. I wanna show you guys I'm a storage junkie, just in case you guys think I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Let me go ahead and show you a little bit of proof. So these right here are just some. These are only a, a very small few of my seasonal hot storages, but hot slash cold storages. But this is just a few of hard drives that I have. So just showing you guys how serious I take storage. And I also have eight 12 terabyte hard drives sitting right here in front of me that I would also show you guys as well if I could, but I don't mean I can't. Can I really, can I, can I, can I turn it? Can I turn it to show y'all? Can y'all see them? Yeah, so these, those are all 12 terabyte hard drives. These bad boys right there. But as I was saying, today we're talking about SD cards, if you guys can see. So for example, something like a, so the, the SD cards will be labeled as V10, V30, V60, V90, and that V stands for video speed class, right? So these are different classes that your SD cards will fall under. So for example, right here, I have a V10. So this is a V10 SD card. You guys may see them labeled SanDisk, or it might say Ultra SD or Mega Super Ultra, all these really big words to make you think that they're a lot better than they actually are, when in reality, these SD cards are quite literally worthless um, depending on what you're looking to do. So if you just have like a, you know, point and shoot camera, the V10 is fine. Point and shoot camera, the V30 is fine. But if you're shooting a higher, at a higher quality, higher frame rate, higher bit rate, and just overall, you want that more-esque when it comes to like, you know, taking photos or recording video, you need a higher V class, okay? So for example, something like this, I got this right here. This is an SD card with an SD card adapter. This is a micro SD to SD adapter. This right here came from TikTok shop. So this right here has one terabyte of storage on it. Would I recommend it? No, you know why? Because it's a very low V count. This right here is a V10, you guys. This is a one terabyte of storage, came from TikTok, it was $15, but it's a V10. What does that mean? It's gonna corrupt on me. It's gonna corrupt on me. I would not recommend that. It is going to corrupt on me. I use that as like a backup storage if I'm ever on a pinch and I got nothing else to back up some of my footage, I'll use that right there because I don't care if it messes up or not. But I would not use that as my main as my main SD card, okay? We have other SD cards like, I think there's, there's one inside of my camera right now that I wanna show you guys, but I'll go down the line because I wanna show you the exact SD cards. I have a whole SD card collection. Oh, my books are gonna fall. Oh, this is not even my SD card collection. My SD card collection. All right, so this is a part of my SD card collection. So I've had like literally every type of SD card that you can literally imagine, you guys. And I've marked on every single one of them, which you probably shouldn't. But when first starting out, when first starting out in photography, what I would do is I've shot with so many different types of SD cards. I would literally put white out on the back of the SD card and I would write on it. So that I remembered which type of SD card it was. Do I recommend you doing that? No, but I used to write on them and let myself know what I would do. So, I mean, I guess this is a good way to do it. I labeled them with like tape and stuff like that. And it worked perfectly fine for me. I never had a problem, but I did this on every single SD card when I first started out in photography. My movie maker, like <laughs> it's crazy. But all of these were not necessarily any good. Um, this was the on brand. This one right here was a V10 that I was also using and I had this one corrupt on me. Just speaking from experience, I'll never tell you guys something like, you know, just to try to, you know, get you to, you know, I don't know, but I will always tell you guys to keep it real raw and unfiltered. This right here was a V10 from the on brand and it was very, very cheap. I was like, oh my God, 128 gigabytes, but it has 100 megabits per second. And 100 megabits per second is a very slow, 
you know, read and write speed. And then the other one over here, which is another V10, this was 80 megabits per second, which is also very slow. So if you're taking high frequency photos or you're transferring files and they're transferring very slow to your computer, this is exactly why. Because you don't have a fast enough, you know, SD card to keep up with your camera or to keep up with your computer. And every time you upgrade one thing inside of your entire gear kit, you have to think like, well, everything here that's in my gear kit now, all be able to work together still. So you may upgrade your camera and now you forgot about your SD card, you're still using the same SD card, so you're getting the same quality and you're wondering why. It's because you didn't upgrade your SD card to also fit that camera. So your SD card could be the one thing that's stopping your photography from being as quality as it could be. And now I wanna show you guys something else, which is like a higher quality grade SD card, which is the ones that I recommend, the ones that I use. I'm gonna take it right out of my camera right now to show you guys real raw unfiltered exactly the ones that I use. So the ones that I use and I recommend are these um, Pro Silver Lexar cards right here. So they have V60 and V90 options. Obviously I would recommend more so the V90. They are more expensive though. This one right here is a V60 card with, with 280 megabits per second, guys, of read and write speed. So it's a lot faster than the 100, it's a lot faster than 80, and it's V60. So the, the video speed class is a lot higher than V10 or V30, it's double the V30. So you're able to shoot 4K files with this, you're also able to shoot high speed photos and videos, and overall it can keep up with your camera even as you continue to upgrade. A V90 will keep up with every camera as you continue to upgrade, but V60 is a very nice medium because you can get a V60 card for like 30 bucks. You can get a you can get two V60 cards. I think they have a pack right now on Lexar or on Amazon. I'll put the link down below for you guys. We can get two for like $60. There's one that's two for 50, but it's not the Pro Silver. So the Pro Silver is a little bit faster than the um, regular. So the Pro Silver it was indicated by the little Silver Pro on the side of it, how you see. They have other ones as well that are in the same class, but they're not the exact same but they are also V60 and those are cheaper. So you're going from $70 for the Pro Silver, the ones that I use, to the regular Pros, which are gonna be um, a, I think it's a $30 decrease. So it goes from $70 to $50 and you get two which is a very good bang for your buck. So V60 is really what you need, you guys. I want you guys to understand that. This is what I use every single day. I'm taking it out of my camera and I keep two of them in here. I have a second one inside of here too. This one's also in my camera and I used to label them, but I don't label them anymore. I just kind of label them on the file set. But every time I use them, I just make sure to you know keep them labeled. And also make sure that you guys too, another thing that will also keep your SD cards um, from corrupting is each time that you go to use it or do another shoot, continue to format it, all right? Formatting, the word formatting is scary. I understand that, but continue to format it okay if you don't format it you will up the chances and, in, and in, it overly increase the chances of it formatting you have one person shoot on there and using a v10 car you got three different client shoots on there you are risking your life okay because you're gonna have a lot of headache when let's say for example you max out one of these cards and you're shooting with a client and out of nowhere the last client shoot that you do corrupts now every last client on that on that on that sd card is gone now you have to you know refund all those people or reshoot it's just too much you have to do and all you had to do is be shooting with a higher grade i'm not saying that it, it's it's guaranteed to not happen but it, it the possibility of a v60 corrupting is way lower all right if, you're, if it's user error, it's always gonna be high for user error. If it's transferring and you yank it out of your computer or you took some photos and you yank it out of your, your camera, obviously it's gonna not, it's gonna corrupt or mess up because it was user error, meaning that it was your fault, all right? But you don't want to have a piece of hardware that will have hardware error, meaning that it's the hardware's fault, all right? You wanna be able to have a SD card inside of your camera that you can trust fully and that you know that you can use and you know it will stand, withstand the test of time. So each time that you're shooting, I usually recommend at highest, I usually will go is um, um, for a V60 or any of these SD cards, the lower that your V, which is your video speed class is, I would recommend a, you know, a lower capacity, um, meaning, meaning gigabytes. So if you're using a V10 right now, it's okay. But if you're using a V10 with 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, you have a higher chance of it corrupting because it has more space to corrupt, if that makes sense. It's a higher space the higher space, like the amount of gigabyte, the gigabyte to video class number is so large. The gap in between it is so large that it's just, it's it's not good, all right? So a good rule of thumb that I like to do is if I'm using V60, 60 times two is what? 120. So 128 is a good, is a good one to have with V60, right? That's a good, that's a good gigabytes, all right? Let's say for example, if you're using V90, you can use a higher gigabytes, okay? Because that, 
well, let's say for example, 90, 90 is 180, you can go up higher. You can use 200, um, 256, I think gigabytes it is, um, on a V90, I'd recommend that. But I would not recommend using V10 or V30 with anything above 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes. Because V30, 30 times 30 times two, this is a rule of thumb that I like to use. I'm not saying this is a law or a rule or anything like that. Read the shirt, real route unfiltered. I'm just saying that this is what I do. If it's a V30, 30 times two, is 60 all right so i'm at max on a v30 i'm using 64 gigabytes i'm not playing no games i've had too many sd cards corrupt on me to be playing games with y'all i'm not trying to like you know what I'm, saying? I'm trying to help y'all out all right so yeah let's get back let's let me let me blah, 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 blah. all right so v10 just means that the you know the the car will write at 10 megabytes per second um which is fine you know if you're shooting like very 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 basic stuff or you're shooting like a point and shoot camera for example something like one of these one of these cameras right here would be fine using a v10 um that's what i have in them right now is like i think i still I think I, still, I got a v30 and i think i think this one has a v30 right here so something like a point and shoot like this or a point and shoot like this one of these cameras would be fine using a v um v10 or v30 but other than that, if it's anything bigger than that or that has, you know, higher file capacity or higher, higher, you know, more needs, I would definitely say um, go up. If it's your RP, definitely have a higher than V30 at least because V10s, bro, I'm just telling y'all, bro, it's a disaster waiting to happen. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. I'm not trying to jinx or anything like that, but it's a disaster waiting to happen. All right. So V10, V30 is fine if you're doing basic, like some HD stuff. But if you're looking, you know, the second that you try to start going into doing, you know, high burst photography or a 4K video, it's going to be a game changer um, when you upgrade. All right. Because that card will not be able to keep up. You're going to wonder like, damn, every other photographer on Instagram is going, they're going crazy. What's letting them, what's letting them, what's letting them air it out? The V90, V60. All right. So that V30 is a step up. Um, and now it's 30 megabytes per second, which is like bare minimum in my recommendation, the better bare minimum that I would recommend for creators that are shooting in 4k. If you guys see me keep looking up cause I have a monitor up here. This monitor right here is the camera. So the camera is just the lens right here. Then I have an external monitor up here trying to see how I look. And I think, I don't know why I keep looking at how I look because I look the exact same. So I just, I'm sorry. I just, I, 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 I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, so that 4K, um, it will still kind of bottleneck a little bit if you're starting to shoot log footage. If you're starting to go into log footage or you know a higher bit rate, a higher frame rate, that V30 will not now, will now not be enough. Now what do we do? We go to V60, which is now this is where I reside. This is where I recommend, right? V60 is what I recommend. You guys right now are on a V90. I can't show you the V90 card right now because you guys are on it, but it's a V90 card. Um, so V60 is like my personal recommendation if you're start as your starting point um for professional work you know it can handle that 4k it can handle 6k even 10 bit um some well, depending on the type of camera you're using it, it, it could handle some 10 bit um formats with no dropouts no buffer no lag and i think that is very you know perfect for high frequency burst photos or for hybrid shooters because that's, that's what i teach hybrid right we're hybrids we're hybrids we don't have slow seasons we lock in we don't have slow seasons in png culture we're hybrids right but v90 V90, that's that top tier. You know what I'm saying? The V90 stays in my video camera. My photo camera got two V60s and that's chilling. I'm fine. I'm not tripping too much about going about going even higher. If I want to use a V60, it'll allow me to start to tap into that 8K um, on my camera. It'll allow me to start hop, hopping into that 8K if I had a V90 inside of my um, A7R5. But you guys are on the um, A7S3 right now. So um, yeah, it's top tier. Um, these are built for that cinema grade video. You know, you get that ultra high speed um like video but also ultra high speed stills and like you can get so high quality um from these cars you can even take photos from the video that you take so like i be screenshotting this is how i make a lot of my thumbnails is from the actual video i'll screenshot it because i'm shooting at such, such a high frame rate and i'm able to do that because of this v90 card all right um so you can use it for like you know sony a7s3 sony a7r5 um any of the other cameras that allow you to do 4k um, or a, even 8K, um, even some Canons. I know Canon have that C, that's the C70 series, but also you probably should use like, a, um, that's a whole different type of card. We're not gonna talk about that right now. We're talking about SD cards. We're not talking about CF type A, type B, that's whole different. A lot of you guys don't have cameras that will, you know, tap into that CF type A, type B. If you guys wanna run a video on that, you know, you can ask me down below in the comments and I'll create a video on that, all right? But um, this one right here, it'll keep your workflow smooth. Um, and all of your files safe. I wholeheartedly believe in this card because 
it's like the top of its class and the top of its grade when it comes to like the, the video, the different, um, you know, video speed cards. And it goes really fast when it comes time to transfer to your computer or, you know, taking pictures and them transferring from the from your camera to the SD card. It's very seamless and very quick. Right. So, yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people will blame their camera. Um, for their footage, you know, skipping or looking soft or not really going right. But most of the time, it's not your camera, it's your SD card, all right? And your SD card usually is not fast enough to do what you're trying to do. This is when I when I always consider upgrading or getting something better. Is what I usually say, like, you know, if your SD card or your camera isn't doing exactly what you want it to do, then it makes sense to, if, if it's limiting your capabilities as a creator, then it always makes sense to upgrade. But until it limits your capabilities, it doesn't really make sense to upgrade. But SD card is the one thing that I will say makes sense to upgrade before it starts to limit your capabilities because when it limits your capabilities, it usually happens with a corruption and you don't want to get corrupted, all right? All right, so if your SD card not being fast enough, it's not writing data fast enough in real time, so you're basically trying to, you know, push, you know, push a fire hose, you know what I'm saying, through a straw. Does that make any sense? Like push that fire hose water through a straw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah, 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 yeah. Fire hose water through the straw. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you're investing in some good glass, you know, a solid camera, a body, then you definitely should not cheap out on the one thing that actually matters when it comes to storing your footage. So at minimum, get you a V60 card. It will save you from corrupted files, from, you know, dropped files, dropped frames, and you know, overall that heartbreak that we feel when you realize that your camera, you know, you know, you overall that heartbreak that you feel at a shoot when you're like, damn, my SD card just died on me. You don't want to feel that, all right? Because majority of the time your SD card is the problem. And I had to figure out that out. I went through so many different SD cards, man. I'm telling y'all that from experience. Like I have so many SD cards. I have all you want I just showed y'all. I have those and that's in that case. I have SD cards all in this case. I've used them all, bro. Can y'all see this before? Like I've used them all. I've used them all. I've used them all, bro. I got a 32 right here with a V10. I got another, I got another V10 with 128 gigabytes corrupted on me. I got a V10. I got a V30 with 64 gigabytes. That's what I would recommend. Something like this. Even if you were to use one of these, you know, a V30 with 64 gigabytes is pretty good too as well. Um, it does have less storage, but you do have a lot less chance of it corrupting on you. All right. So remember that rule of thumb that I told you, you guys. You got a V10. Don't be going too high on them. Don't go. Don't, don't go. Don't go too high on how much. How much you know gigabytes you have. I'm gonna leave different. You know. Um, SD cards down below that I personally recommend as well as a link to my storefront and all the different storage solutions that I use as well This is the number one thing that I will be picking up during Black Friday The number one thing is storage you guys storage 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 All right, you guys see how many hards that I have I believe and I love storage so much I feel like storage is the number one thing that you have to load up on when you can so the moment that Black Friday comes They're in my cart. All right, you guys see I'm an SD card junkie Okay, all right. Let me know down below what else you're gonna see. What more game do you guys want? This one was specifically tailored to SD cards because I got the answer. I got asked this question. I thought, why not make a video? Until next time, taxi. Oh, there's the cookies. Be right back. I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it.